I saw this tweet the other day and it absolutely blew my mind. <laughs> Apparently now AI can read our minds. Are you reading my mind right now? So what these scientists did was take brainwaves from EEGs and take functional MRI scans and then put it into an AI and it spat out what that person was thinking at the time of the scan. This is insane. So what I want to talk about in this video is what could this look like if it goes wrong? Because this could mean so much for privacy. What if the government gets hold of this and can read my mind? But at the same time, what could this look like if it goes right? Because this could be so beneficial for patients with neurological conditions. So that's really what I want to talk about in this video. So I'm Jack, I'm a doctor in the UK, and I look through the science and the evidence that's online at the moment and try to work out how we can live happier and healthier lives based on all of that science that I've read. So if you like the idea of that, please subscribe. And let's get into this. So this is the first time that scientists have been able to read people's thoughts non-invasively because the way they would used to do this is to put electrodes into people's brains under neurosurgery so they cut and open the skull and then based on those electrodes they can then read the brain waves and then interpret what the person was thinking but what we're able to do now is do this non-invasively which is so exciting so there was two groups of scientists that have used AI to interpret people's thoughts. Ones in Australia used an EEG, which is an electroencephalogram. Put a hat on the person's head and the electrodes will look at the person's brain waves. This is much more crude than putting electrodes into the person's actual brain. So it's really hard to interpret, but that's where AI comes in. So the AI is able to take all of this data, so we train it on the person's specific data, and then we can interpret what that person is actually thinking at the time. Now, this was only 40% accurate, so it still needs a lot of work, but it's also incredibly exciting. The other group of scientists were based in America, and they used functional MRI scans to look at the blood flow through the brain while the people were listening to podcasts. So the person would sit down, have the podcast in their ears, and then they're getting their brain scanned. And at the same time, that's being fed into the AI and it's training itself. So once it's trained itself, then they take new information. So the person's thoughts at the time, and then see if the training data has allowed them to interpret what the person is thinking. So this was 50% accurate. That's how they're doing it. So one with a massive functional MRI machine and one with a hat that basically has a load of electrodes inside it that reads brainwaves. Now let's get into what this could mean if it goes really, really badly wrong. So I found the American paper really, really great because it talks about what this could mean for people's personal privacy. Because when we just think about how far technology has come in the last 10 years, we start with these massive phones that are in briefcases and then we end up with these little iPhones. And in the same way, this is currently being done by ugly hats or with massive functional MRI machines. But in 10 years, this technology could be completely revolutionized and become tiny. And in those cases, then could the government use this technology to suppress thoughts or to suppress communication? Well, maybe. So that's why these group of American scientists have said, now that this is early in the process, let's make sure that we get the proper regulations in order so that that can't happen. I think that in some ways, as much as this feels like a risk, the fact the scientists are so cognizant of that risk and are already trying to mitigate it is really positive. So what could this look like if it goes right? So there are so many people with neurological conditions that affect their communication, whether that could be a traumatic brain injury, a stroke, and what this presents is a potential way for them to communicate with family members, friends, and loved ones that they thought they might never ever speak to again. I think that's pretty incredible and I think it's worth the risks. So what can you take away from this? 
because I always want to leave you with a thought or just a way of interpreting this in your own context. So while I've been making this video, I've realized how much of a blessing my communication is because what we have here is a new way of communicating, but our current way of communicating, we can often take for granted. So this has made me realize that, you know, there are people out there who've had strokes, traumatic brain injuries that aren't able to communicate with their family members. And I still am. So just to be really, really grateful for that. And also to be grateful for the scientists that if I somehow lose that ability to communicate, there are scientists out there that are trying to still allow me that absolute pleasure of communicating with family members, loved ones and friends. So I think this is really, really exciting and there are definitely some risks involved, but ultimately, in my opinion, those risks are worth it. Do you think the risks are worth it? Let me know in the comments down below because obviously invading our privacy, that is a huge thing, but also there's so many benefits for people with neurological conditions that this is so exciting for. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. If you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Thanks.